I like to see doctors really looking into the new age because peptides are the new age. Now you have the FDA coming in and it's going to stomp on all those clinics, stomp on all those doctors. What is up everyone, it's Roos. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is 1907more.com, keep on code or Russo. ASMR spritz, intelligent cobalt. Hear your noises. All right, today, breaking news, the FDA October peptide ban. So I wanted to weigh in. For those who don't know, the FDA is trying to ban peptides out of compounding pharmacies. They're going after the telemedicine health clinics and or doctors who are looking into peptide therapy for their patients. So they're trying to get out of the legal compounding pharmacies where you know the quality is FDA compounding pharmacy and you probably want the peptide anyways because I don't know there's probably a user base of who knows how many people who constantly know about all the benefits of peptides use peptides, didn't want to continue buying from the underground, which will explode, and then went to FDA compounding pharmacies to play into the system, get it from an FDA compounding pharmacy, and never have to worry about quality control, not getting their items, et cetera, et cetera. FDA is more like seeing that as, oh, this is cutting into the profits because a lot of these peptides cannot be patented meaning they would have to create a synthetic analog and then patent that. A lot of these peptides are naturally occurring just in small amounts, or maybe the environment is decreasing certain things that you could inject in as a peptide and overall offset the modern day life that is around us. I just find it kind of ridiculous, you know? It's my body, my choice. How can I go to one of these gas stations, go to a bar, all this shit in the grocery store that has chemicals in it, but these peptides, which again, are amazing. They're life-changing. And to see newer age doctors, you know, move towards peptide therapy, be like actually finding the solution versus mitigating the side effect, which is better reoccurring revenue, obviously. But I like to see doctors doctors really looking into the new age because peptides are the new age. Now you have the FDA coming in and it's going to stomp on all those clinics, stomp on all those doctors, and you're going to see the underground go up even more because there's already a user base for this. Off Tony's video right here. When I watch Tony's video, he goes into basically the way they're banning some of these peptides is that they're just calling like this could be an immune system response thus we can ban it basically the fda has all the power in the world to do whatever they want and it's just sad to see medical freedom be confined and confined upon with certain medical freedoms aka we all know like black pill here that there are certain you know pubescent blockers i could take or you know, there's E2 injections I could like, that seems to be wide open healing and testosterone seem to be under the scope. And it's sad to see, I don't think peptides will go away. You know, I think peptides, there will always be peptides, just like there's always steroids, right? The quality just gets bad. And then the owners of the UGL start doing exit schemes and not paying right. And this is all solved and the money's put all back in the government's pockets by going after a compounding pharmacy i can't tell you how many people would pay more to ensure quality to ensure where it came from to ensure that it was made under fda rules right not in a bathtub that they would go and support that versus underground which may be cheaper right maybe cheaper might have better stock might have better selection and overall is just as quick shipping wise and virtually the same compound it all depends on you know, the sanitary environment it was made in and the chemists that showed up that day, if it's actually legit or bunk. FDA compounding pharmacy, you knew it was never going to probably be bunk. And this is where it's like, we have to voice our opinions here. This is the United States of America. I thought this was about voicing opinions, creating arguments and discussion. I want to see peptides survive. You know how many older people discover peptides 
and our lives changed for the better like crazily. All those deficiencies that, again, really weren't known about until the past 20, 30 years, right? You have all these old people benefiting tremendously from peptides, healing long-term injuries, helping them regenerate their body. And now they're under scrutiny where I can go buy a can of chew, smoke a fucking vape with who knows what chemicals in it, and then go wash it down with some red 40 fucking Gatorade and go drink some damn corn syrup. It's just like, okay, that's all fucking fine, but these peptides are not fine. No, it's these peptides are cutting into the overall system and it sucks and that's business and business is business. But I feel like I would like to see there be a way that the FDA could work with peptide therapy as far as the freedoms go with telemedicine. With my little experience in that, I could see the tides turning. I could see the tides going for the worse. Personally, I think the tides are going to go personally for the worse. There's no stopping the FDA. They can pretty much ban whatever they want and they have always banned whatever they want. So if they're saying that peptides are done in compounding pharmacies, expect to see an influx in the underground because peptides are just starting to light off mainstream. You have Ozempic hitting the market. Now everyone's looking for a cheaper version of Ozempic. Now that's cutting into the people who spend millions of dollars researching Ozempic to get it approved. It's just the game is the game. You can't hate the players, but you got to be educated what's happening. And maybe you got to talk to the peas and be like, come on, we can come to a compromise here. I'll see you guys in my next video.